Okay, so let's take a look at some studies on stereotypes. First of all, reminder, the theoretical prediction here is that exposure to gender stereotypes should cause increased gender system justification as measured by survey items like we saw before, but in this case specific to gender uh, justification. Um, and specifically, if repeated exposure to these complementary stereotypes does serve to justify gender inequality in society, then simply increasing the cognitive accessibility of such stereotypes should automatically trigger an increase in the perceived fairness and legitimacy of the status quo. So here, with these studies, what they're attempting to do is to demonstrate experimentally that when you expose people to these elements of these stereotypes, it, it can have an effect on their judgments of the legitimacy and fairness of the entire social system. So here would be an experiment. Um, there would be a couple of groups in these experiments, but here's the basic idea. Uh, subjects were exposed to communal stereotypes. So these are these aspects of the, of the stereotype for women, for example, asking subjects, uh, are women more considerate, happy, warm, moral, honest? Those are those communal, the, the positive, the good dimensions of a complementary stereotype. Right? And then subjects were given the gender-specific system justification scale. Now that scale has items like this. In general, relations between men and women are fair. The division of labor and families generally operates as it should. Gender roles need to be radically restructured. Notice it's reversed scored. Um, let's see. Everyone, male or female, has a fair shot at wealth and happiness. Sexism in society is getting worse every year. Notice it's reversed scored. So again, these items are capturing uh, uh, people's um, uh, gender system justification score, uh, SJ system justification. And here's what they found. Um, so the, the M for the men, how men responded, and W for the women, and this is exposure to the communal stereotypes. So when men were exposed to uh, communal st stereotypes, um, they then later took the gender system justification scale and scored somewhere between 4.5 and 5 there, right? But when they were not exposed to those same communal stereotypes, um, there was not much difference for men. But look at what happens for women. When women were exposed to these communal stereotypes, that women are warm and caring and nurturing and so on, when that stereotype was, was activated in their minds, they were more likely to see the system right, of gender relations as more legitimate and fair than when they were not exposed to those uh, communal stereotypes. In other words, just the activation of those uh, elements of the communal stereotypes is was causing women in this group right, to see the, the gender inequality as more legitimate and fair in society um, than when the women were not exposed. So this was evidence that for women, not for men though, but for women, um, these stereotypes can influence, right, can influence judgments of legitimacy of the social system with respect to gender. So again, the results when, when exposed to communal stereotypes, the warm, honest, nurturing, etc., um, women showed higher system justification ratings than when not exposed. There was no effect on men. Now in another study, uh, it reveals the complementary stereotypes for status differences between northerners and southerners here in America. And so here we see uh, judgments of intelligence, productivity, happiness, and honesty. And uh, the subjects were asked to rate um, northerners and southerners along these dimensions, how intelligent northerners are and southerners. So for example, northerners are in the dark, southerners the light. And so people were judging Northerners to be more intelligent than Southerners. Productivity, slight edge there. But look, the Southerners are happier than the Northerners and a bit more honest as well. Overall, Jost would argue that this shows a pattern of the complementary stereotypes. The Northerners are intelligent and productive, but oh, but they're less happy and honest, right? So a positive stereotype dimension and a negative stereotype dimension. Um, for Southerners, they're, they're the happy ones, right? Happy folks here, but not as intelligent, right? 
So again, the idea is, is that these, these complementary stereotypes are showing a positive element and a negative dimension as well. And Jost argues this serves to create this notion of nobody has it all, the illusion of equality. In addition, um, subjects were also asked, for example, are Northerners more assertive, competent, intelligent, ambitious, responsible than Southerners, right? So each of these being done in a single item. Um, and there is a tendency to attribute agentic, so uh, these, these characteristics uh, are associated with agency, you know, the ability to, to assert your power and to do things uh, uh, in, in the world. Uh, there is a tendency to attribute agentic characteristics, ambition, competitiveness, competence, to high status groups, in this case northerners, and communal characteristics, warm, nurturing, friendly, etc., to lower status groups, in this case southerners. Now what about rich and poor? In this study, subjects read stories with a rich and poor protagonist who were either happy or unhappy. Thus, there were four kinds of descriptions, right? So you could read a story about a rich person and they were also happy, or a rich person and they were unhappy. You could read a story about a poor person who was happy, or a poor person who was unhappy, right? Then subjects took the system justification survey. In this case, not the gender system justification survey, but a more a general system justification survey. And this is what you get um, for the rich protagonist. The rich protagonist that was also described as happy, less a system justification rating, right? So a, a, a smaller score on the system justification scale than when the rich protagonist was unhappy, right? So the system more legitimate when the rich uh, person was described as unhappy than when the rich person described as happy. And for the poor, more legitimacy, higher system justification scores when the poor protagonist was described as happy than when the poor one was described as sad, as unhappy. So again, uh, we see this pattern of uh, people see the system as more uh, legitimate and fair when different groups have a positive uh, but, a, but also a negative uh, dimension. So poor people are poor, that's negative, but when they're described as happy, that, that's a positive. And that makes people say, okay, well, yes, they're poor, but they're happy, right? And for the rich, um, when the rich people are rich, that's positive, right? It's good to be uh, wealthy. Uh, but those folks, uh, when they're described as unhappy, that's when people see the system as more legitimate, more fair. So again, reading about poor but happy protagonist increases system justification compared to poor and unhappy. Uh, rich but unhappy increases system justification compared to rich and happy. Right? And remember the idea of the rich and happy. Rich and happy, that's like the, that would be somebody who has it all. Right? And poor and unhappy, that would be somebody who has none of it, the worst of all possible. Right? And, and the, the ratings on the legitimacy and fairness of the system are lower. So what are the general conclusions here? for Joseph's colleagues, being reminded of the virtues of the oppressed leads people to express greater satisfaction of the social system, right? The virtues of the oppressed. So the poor people, if they're happy, that's going to lead people to express greater satisfaction of the so social system, right? Now, previous research had identified a tendency to blame the victim for poor social outcomes. So system justification research is showing a phenomenon of victim enhancement, and that's how this sort of differs from just world theory. So in just world theory, right, you might blame the victim that if people are poor, well, they deserve it because people uh, get what they deserve and deserve what they get, right? In this general, uh, the uh, system justification view, there's also a, a phenomenon, not just of blaming the victim, but of enhancing the victim. Yes, they're poor, but they're happy. And that also contributes to this uh, judgment that the system is legitimate and fair. So let me uh, read a quote from Jost. Um, system justification theory proposes that victim enhancement is assumed to justify the system by uh, implying a fair dispersion of benefits and burdens across social groups rather than a sense of prediction or control. 
Complementary stereotypes, which are victim-enhancing, reinforce the desire to believe that no one has it all, and that as Dr. Pangloss had it, bad luck in one domain is offset by good luck in others. It seems important that the compensating benefits commonly ascribed to members of disadvantaged groups, their virtues, are causally unrelated to the dimension on which they are disadvantaged. In this manner, the system as a whole can be seen as fair, because in the long run, everyone encounters both rewards and setbacks. There is, in other words, an illusion of equality. So there are two routes, or routes to system justification. In one, you can blame the victim, and this promotes a feeling of predictability and control when a given trait is perceived as causally related to the outcome in question. So for example, um, you know, for poor folks, you might say, oh, well, they're lazy. Well, laziness would be causally related to their poor economic outcome, right? They're not, they're not getting out there, getting a job, or they're not working hard or whatever, right? So, so that would be the, the blaming the victim, the kind of uh, just world theory approach. Um, the second one here uh, is that uh, you, what you do is you stress the virtues of the disadvantaged and the vices of the advantaged groups in society. And this creates the illusion of equality when there's no perceived link between the trait and the outcome, right? So the poor are happier than the rest of us. Well, the happiness is not related in any direct causal way to their, their poverty, for example. But what it does do is it promotes this illusion of equality.